Go for it. Hi, I'm Miriam, and this is how weaving became computing. So this right here is a very primitive frame loom, or at least a modernly made version of a frame loom. Um, and you would basically, you could warp it from the beam of your roof, like your, your house, so you'd be limited by the size of your wall. Um, if you've ever seen in natural history museums, the round stones with holes in the middle, those are loom weights. So in this instance, the washers are serving as my loom weights. Um, but it was very tedious and arduous, and you would have to pick out each thread so that you were going over, under, over, under, all the way across. And this is how you made all of the fabric that all of your family's clothing was made from. So let's move on to some slightly more technologically advanced weaving. Um, oh, one real quick thing. So the primitive loom, basically any, any thread that's pulled forward or lifted, so it makes it binary. So lifting a thread means it's on and then the, the uh, weft thread goes underneath it. So warp is the long thread, and weft are the back and forth. So this is a rigid heddle loom, and rigid heddle, if you want to get close shut, has slots and holes. So we've got threads alternating through the slots and then through the holes. So when we lift the heddle, the hole threads come up. When we drop the heddle, the slot threads come up. So the space between the threads is called the shed, and you can pass the shuttle through the shed. And then use the heddle to beat it in. So you would work the same thing back and forth, but it again is over, under, over, under which in binary is one zero one zero and then the alternate rows are zero one zero one so the added benefit of this loom is that i can wrap a much longer warp on it so there's actually like three yards of warp wrapped around this back loom you can't see them between the pieces of paper but it meant that you could weave a lot more fabric at once so that was a great advance in weaving technology. So let's go over here. This is a table loom, and on it we are weaving a twill. So a twill effectively is a pattern where the weft threads jump over more than one. So instead of going over, under, over, under, this pattern goes over three, under one. And the way that, the, that this loom is programmed, I mean programmed in air quotes, is that the threads are threaded in a particular order. So this is a heddle, and you can see a heddle has an eye in it, like a needle. So the heddles are attached to shafts, and there's four shafts up here. One, two, three, four. You can kind of see them all. They lift independently. But the way that I've threaded this loom, they go through one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all the way across. So when I lift the first shaft, it lifts every fourth thread. So basically those threads that are lifted are on. They would be a one in binary. Or I mean, sorry, they would be a zero in binary. Because this, yeah, this is going under. Anyway, so the binary for this kind of weave looks like this. Because we're going over three at a time and under one. So first shaft, lifts every fourth thread. Then the second shaft lifts the next set of every fourth thread. Then the third shaft, and I've got selvage threads here that may require a little bit of extra work. And then the fourth. So for a loom like this, the programming is done in the threading. So the way that I've threaded it will determine how, and then the way that I move the shafts determines the pattern. But in 1801, Joseph Marie Jacquard came up with a modification to a draw loom. And basically, each of these is a heddle, just like those heddles with the eyes that we saw before. Each of these threads is a heddle. And it's connected to a warp thread. This is the warp. And the whole apparatus lifts a little bit and pushes up against all these cards. So these cards, back where you can't see it up here, um, are, are actually, thank you. Um, 
So you can kind of see little like nobbins up here. So that's where the heddles get pushed into the card. And anytime that there's a, anytime that there's a hole in the card, the heddle can go up even further, which lifts the thread so that the shuttle can pass underneath it. So that will lay that warp thread on top of the weft. So the, this particular set of punch cards is gonna make this pattern. And you can see they kind of loop through. So if you were weaving this on this loom, you would push a pedal somewhere over here, which you can't see. Um, you would push a pedal and it would advance the next card. And then you would throw the shuttle and the pattern would just appear as you kept advancing the cards that were programming the pattern. And the pattern would show up with what you're weaving. So this is an alternate version. So instead of having separate cards for each row, this one just has e you know a single row for each row of weave. But again, the principle is the same, where the heddles are going to push through the holes and that will make a lifted thread. That's the thread that is on. So a jacquard loom allows you to work something like this. So this is a much more complicated fabric and there's no way, well, but not no way, it would be really labor intensive to try to do it on a regular draw loom. So Jacquard's modifications for a draw loom to program them using punch cards made it possible. So this is a computer punch card. Let me see if I can, there we go, maybe. Okay, so a computer punch card functions the same way that Jacquard punch cards worked, where you would program, you know, a single card to be either a line of code or it could be part of a line of code or it could store data. But the same thing, you know, it's binary. It's either an on or an off. So uh, punch cards, punch cards directly came from weaving technology. You can might also recognize that this looks a lot like a player piano. Player piano technology came from weaving technology. So same kind of thing, on and off. Weaving is all binary. Thanks for joining me.